All right, here we go. Three, two, seven. Welcome uh, to the Trevor and Bryce Show. Uh, Big 12 football. That's all we do. That's all we talk about. Uh, I'm your host, Bryce, of the Trevor and Bryce Show. And if only I could find esteemed colleague Trent. How about it? Trevor Knight. Bryce Petty, how are you today, my man? of the Trevor and Bryce Show. It's coming at you. Hot. Dude, happy belated Halloween. Oh, man. Um, We had a fun weekend. Hope you guys all did as well. Getting candy. My next door neighbor, pretty cool idea. Everybody thought it was for COVID, but supposedly he's done this a lot. He puts a PVC pipe from his upstairs window down through a ladder to close to the sidewalk. And it was the attraction of the neighborhood. <laughs> it's the little candy shoot. And these kids That's just get, sweet. their eyes get huge. Right. They get all excited and they go down there and they put their, you know, their bag or their bucket or whatever underneath the, the PVC and out comes uh, the candy. It's pretty cool. So does he, he sits behind the door, throws the candy in a chute. No, he sits upstairs in the oh. window. Oh, and wow. And it come, it slides down. No kidding. Now yeah. that is that is cool. It's cool. It's yeah. cool. But because of that, that was the big attraction of the neighborhood. Right. We're right next door, so we oh. got millions, literally millions of kids. Oh, I thought you you were gonna say that they just skipped you and went to the PC yeah. party. It was fun. It was fun. Um, we went to a Halloween party and and dressed up uh, the night before Halloween, and then we were just. Threw on some outfits the day of. But you guys, Bryce, yeah, little Rivy, and your wife, um, you guys all got a uh, little Toon Squad we went action Toon Squad. going? We went straight Toon Squad. I don't know if you can, if we have the uh, capabilities to show, it'd be sweet. If, Here look we go. at that right look there. Look at that. Uh, look. That's a golf tan line, but that is Mr. Little and Ribs. Mrs. Petty with Little Riv. She's it, all man. in. So cute. Man, man I that's tell you it. What. And then that's, I, I kind of changed it up a little bit. Then I went, you know, what would be more fun to, you know, sleeveless, no sleeves. The Bill Murray. I think uh, it's a good look. I so think so did, too. Um, was this y'all's first Halloween where Rivy can walk around and, and get candy? Yes. That's yes. awesome. Um, had a lot of fun watching that. What, could, Garrett, let's show what uh, what, what Trevor and, and uh, his bride. What, yeah, look at that. Yeah, this was the last minute deal. Filter, no filter. You know, we it. put on the, the, the dark jeans, the uh, the wrap around, the, you know, I had the beautiful wig going, which I think I could pull off. I need to grow out my hair. And, um, Obviously, she's the filter. I'm the no filter. I thought it was pretty clever. It's, it's good. Yeah, it's pretty clever. So. Um, man bun for sure. Dude, oh, I can yeah. see you rock that. that. No doubt. I think a, we actually I'm had the same pretty, bats. pretty. If I was a woman, bats. yeah, it'd be pretty, 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 pretty. Wow, that's a jar. Pretty, pretty. Um, so a lot of fun. Uh, Halloween. Great time. Great time. And this will be the last one for you guys as as just a single I know. couple. Little you know? guy will be around next year. I'll make you a little pumpkin. Awesome. Pull him around in a in a wagon. It's so much fun. So like, anyways, fun fun weekend. Um that was Sunday. The day before that, Bryce yeah. happened to have been Saturday. Correct. And Saturday is the day that we fill up with Big Twelve college football. That's why we're here. We had some teams show and flex their muscles. We had some teams get big wins despite even some rocky play, um, and we had some teams that are digging themselves deeper and deeper into a um, into a hole. Yeah. So let's dive in. Yeah. Why? Why the hell not? Yeah. Uh, who knows? We're gonna start with OU again. Of That's course. weird. Yep. Uh, we talked about it last week. I don't know. Somehow OU continually uh, is just at the top of the list that uh, you know NCAA football scoreboard comes out with so when I type up my notes that's what comes out but we got Texas Tech at OU um you know again kind of this was the uh you know fresh off the fire and it was all OU it was all OU and even more than that it was all Caleb Caleb Williams Williams. people were saying okay he comes into Texas you catch lightning in a bottle and they win he brings him back the following week plays phenomenal at home right then you go up to Lawrence, Kansas, and the Oklahoma offense really didn't get going until, you know, midway through the fourth quarter. Yeah. Did we make the right decision? Is Lincoln Riley as smart as everybody thinks? Blah, 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 blah. It was the, the maddest fan base for an 8-0 and team that I've ever seen in my life were the Oklahoma Sooner fans. Now, you get back at home, you play a Texas Tech team that's a little battered, a little bruised, lost their head coach, and – Oklahoma flexed their muscles on them on Saturday. Six touchdown yeah. passes, tying a freshman school record for Caleb Williams. He looked poised. He looked confident. Yeah. Um, he looked like he had been out there for four years 
it was uh, it was impressive. And you know, we look back um, when when Spencer Rattler was playing and Oklahoma was really just skating by, mm. and Lincoln Riley in a press game uh, a post game press conference, he had a little smirk on his face and he said, "I like this team." Now we didn't know what was going to transpire with Caleb and the QB switch and all this, but we're now in championship November, and Oklahoma, if they continue this, is playing really good football. Yeah, yeah, I agree. This was, to me, this was the most complete game, right? We saw a complete half when Caleb Williams came in against Texas. This was the most complete game. I just felt like you know defense forced three turn, and and again, it's and it's Texas Tech, which is. It, still, they're five and they were five and three coming in, yep. you know, which we were talking about on the podcast. Kind of an interesting time to fire a coach, but um, this this was to me the the first complete game that OU has played from start to finish, and they just did it in a way that they really just took what the the defense gave them. And I'm not, I'm not sure we were talking, you know, pre show about the two quarterbacks, which we get to talk about again, um, in this game. But what was what was unique was was that he. They, they had a, a passing attack. Now, I don't know if that was just they saw something in Texas Tech's defense coming into the game that, hey, you know, they, and we always loved that. You know, coach comes up and says, hey, Trevor, it's going to be it's gonna be your show. Um, and and I always loved it when, when Bros came to me and said, hey, we're going to be throwing the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, we did that most times anyways. But, you know, it's it was it, – and, and honestly, was what, what was different about this is they scored a lot of different ways. You know, it and wasn't A lot all, of different guys, That's right, too, that's right. right. It wasn't, you know, just bombs over Baghdad or anything like that. I mean, the guy was 23 of 30, 402 yards and six touchdowns, like you said. Um, you know, ties a, a, a record. He's now in the record books with with Landry Jones, Kyler Murray. Only got to beat him was Baker Mayfield, so it's, it's pretty dang good company there. Um, but to your point, he looked really poised. He looked, again, like he's having fun, which I love watching him. That's what's most fun to me, I think. Yep is watching him because he just looks like he's having and fun. And the way that the team responds to him. Yeah. I mean, you, you look back, Marvin Mims, right? The guy just produces. And up until the Texas game when Caleb now. came in, yeah. he didn't have a touchdown. Right. Right. Now, I mean, this week, four receptions, 135 yards, two yeah. touchdowns, making plays all over the place. There is something about Caleb Williams that mimics – what Baker was able to do, what Kyler was able to do, even what Jalen Hurts was able to do, and make the guys around him better. Right. This team is looking really, really good. Um, obviously, always a question mark on the defensive side, but if the defense can play well, I think they're putting themselves in a position to, you know, make a, a run here when they got to play Baylor here in a couple right, weeks, which right. is going to be a huge game down in Waco. Um, you know, you got to play Bedlam still. You've got to play, you know, Iowa State. You've still got some some big matchups on the schedule which I know we'll, we'll get into um and we got into a lot last week on how does this all yeah. shape up but they are starting to play their best football in November and that's you know what you have to do to be a potential college football playoff team yeah um interesting conversations to be had right now about this Heisman I think we 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 not only released um you know the the what what is the playoff picture now with the top four in the first two out, but then we also get this the the Heisman watch list as well, yeah. which is uh, we were talking about um, you know Bryce Young at Alabama, Kenneth Walker, um, who is in Caleb Williams, it, he's number three. No, he's not. He is, which is How crazy. The heck so did I miss yeah, that? What do you what? Give us your thoughts there. You're, here's a guy that's essentially <laughs> that's, playing that's half just, of a season, stupid. and he's played three games, yeah. and he's immediately in. The the conversation. I mean, he he will be invited to New York if it was today, All right? Which is crazy to me, right? Nothing against what he's done, nothing against how good of a player he is. But do you think he's deserving of a trip to New York at this time, or do you think it's it really is a down year where there's not that one, no questions asked? That's the Heisman winner. I thought Matt Corral was in there. He is in there. He's just further down on the list in the odds that I saw. Dude, that's that's really funny. I, I teed that up, and you're like, yeah, dude. I just can't wrap three. my that's mind funny. around that um, Bryce Young is just going to run away with this thing. But like, who else? Like, yeah, don't I get agree. me wrong. He's played really, really well. He's a good leader of that of that uh, Alabama team. Uh, everything that he does is great. Don't get me wrong. But it's not a Lamar Jackson. It's not a Baker Mayfield type season. It's not a Tim Tebow type yeah. season. Like, it's none of those things. Yeah, right. I I agree. Um. I, I don't know. We'll, we, you know, sorry, fans. We're gonna have to fact check 
Trevor here because I, I think C.J. Stroud and Matt Corral are actually both ahead of him. Different but maybe lists. Not, but maybe not. Um, regardless, doesn't matter. He's actually in the talk. And this is what I love about the MVP, right? The Heisman, the most valuable player. When I, when I think of the most valuable player for my team, I think of three guys right now in, in, in the country. I think of Kenneth Walker. I think of Matt Corral. And I think of Caleb Williams because of what he's done. And we've, we've had a front row seat because we're watching Big 12 every weekend. But what he's done since he's come into the game at that fourth and two, and regardless of the chitter-chatter or whatnot, we saw, we saw the whole team elevate. To me, it does not matter if you play three games or 12. That just gives you stats. Um, obviously, you want to see you know production in a bunch of games, but just watching this team elevate with him, how do you not talk about him? Why in the world would he not be in New York right now? And I, I just don't care that he's had, you know, a, again, a, a smaller, um, you know, tape and, and as opposed to these other guys, what he's done for this team, right? He's been a match, right? I, I'm he telling is, you. He's a stroke of the match, light the fire, here they come, boys, down the stretch. It is, um, It has been very cool to watch. I just... I can't decide at this time if he's truly deserving of a trip to New York City or if it really is just a down year in the Heisman race. I, I can't. Well, it's definitely been it's definitely been a little bit of both. And and what's what's funny just in the in the entire world of college football is it's it's been a down year on both sides. Outside of Georgia, it's just it's all Georgia and then everybody else is kind of, you know, they're taking rounds, you know. Right. Um and, you know, kind of get knocked down in the fourth round. They get back up. They knock them down six. It's just a weird kind of boxing. You know what I'm saying? So Let us not forget, though, that we've got a lot of fun to, to watch here in the next yeah, couple of years. With, be... with, with, no, oh, next oh, couple gotcha, years gotcha. with Caleb Williams. Yeah, yeah. This dude is a true freshman playing with right, that much right, poise. Right, I mean, right. think about take, – take me back to your freshman year, yeah. right, when you were uh, yellow shirting or whatever shirt you were wearing. Purple, purple. Purple shirting. Yeah. Do you think – realistically that you were capable of coming in maturity wise poise wise talent wise all, all understanding of the game i mean the list goes on yeah. would you have been able to step in and produce like a yeah. caleb williams not, as not that, a chance not a, not a right? chance i don't mind i don't I, I really don't mind admitting that i i had to grow up uh for me i had to grow up in, in my own belief mm-hmm which is which is a really weird That's thing. That's the to biggest say. piece of yeah, it. Yeah. Right? I mean it's it's crazy. And when you watch him, you know, again, the fingernail thing, the the uh, what do you whatever you call that, the not the headband, it's like a do rag, half do rag, whatever. He's just got his own style. But, you know, half half in, half out mouthpiece the whole time too. But he just laughs, man. He laughs, he loves it. He knows, I think. I won't say this out loud. He won't, but I, I feel like he knows he's the best player out there because when he goes and plays, that's what you see. You saw that with Kyler Murray. Mm -hmm. You saw that with Baker Mayfield. You saw that with Johnny Manziel. Those guys that that just know I'm better than you. Yeah. They don't mind showing that it. He's truly a little believe bit, it. Right, 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 right. And and that's what's it's funny when you compare all three of those guys, which that would be a hell of a show for us uh, between you know Baker, Kyler. Um, and and Caleb, which, who I think has a, a really good chance, even though we were talking about Spencer Rattler, his to lose. I, I think Caleb's going to be that guy next year. Um, but in this system, when you have a guy like this, and and that whether or not he doesn't believe the hype, or or he's just good in the spotlight, whatever it was that that just didn't match up well with Spencer Rattler this year, um, he just gives those guys a a different feel, a different look. And and I never had that. I never had that. I had a people pleaser. I wanted to please coach. I wanted to please everybody else. And it really affected me. It affected me even in the league. Um, I was the same way. Yeah. So I, I just I love I tried it. I tried to envy, be too perfect. Yes, right? man. I envy I envy Caleb so much um, in that in that world. Um, and that goes for a lot of you know you you out there that that are you know watching this podcast. And and again, if you if you are a player, if you're not a player. Uh, want to be a quarterback, man? If you have fun and just don't care, I I have heard that more in my life post football that I play better when I just didn't care. That is th 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 those exact words yes. come out of my mouth. I I take myself back to spring ball of 2013. Okay, 
or maybe yeah, 2013. So I'm going in. I'm, I'm trying to become the starter for the first time, and I wasn't playing as well as I knew that I could because I was trying to be perfect. Yeah. I ended up having a conversation with a teammate of mine. He's like, "Dude, just go out there to let it rip. Like, don't care as much." I'm like, "That doesn't make sense right, in my right, head." Right, right, right. What do you mean not? Do care. Don't care as much. Yeah. But when I didn't care as much, yeah. I was just, "You do. You play better." Think about it. Pat Mahomes, when he was playing, you know, the best football of, uh, on the planet, dude, he's out there having fun with Travis yeah. Kelsey and yeah. Tyree Kill and and the coaching staff. Obviously, it you have to get to a certain point of trust with your coaches, with your teammates, all those types of things. But go out there and let it rip, man. It's, yeah. it's game day. You got, you got nothing to lose, man. Right. You really don't. Right. And that, that's what. And I think that's, again, kind of going back to the Spencer Rattler conversation, I think that's what got a little bit of Spencer Rattler is, is when you watch him talking about Mims, uh, you know, five minutes ago, Caleb throws the ball up to him. He lets him go make a play. Yeah. And, and when you are timid with the football and want to be perfect and trying to make – and when you when you just let it rip and go, that's when your guys can make plays, and and then that's when ultimately this offense really rides. So um, on that topic, though, Spencer Rattler did come in, which was great, great by him, great by the fans, giving him a standing O. Guys loving him, embracing him. You know, Lincoln Riley saying the same uh, thing post game is is okay. Now it's over. He showed you that he's a team guy. You know, he hasn't transferred yet, which we all, you know, me and you were talking about which was a big deal. So 505, 67 yards TD. What do you think about him coming in? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, obviously, he's still patting the wounds, right? I mean, it's disappointing. He wants to be the guy out there. He's a competitor. He's a great football player. But it is not his job right now. Yeah. Right. And I know that better than anybody. Yeah. I was a starter for two years. Baker comes in. I've got to sit behind him as a competitor that ate at me. Yeah. But – I knew there were things ahead, right? And so I'm ex I was excited to see that on Saturday. I'm more excited to see how Spencer continues to handle this and what his future holds. Yeah. Does he end up at a big Power 5 conference team and, you know, lead them to a bunch of wins? I think he's got the the, the, the capacity and the ability to do so. Um, but it's got to be how he responds and how he takes this for lack of a better term, kick in the teeth. Yeah. And turns it into potentially something good. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Um, so it'll be fun to watch Oklahoma, you know, as we move into these next couple of games. But um, big bye week coming in. Big bye week. So good for them. All right. Oklahoma State, Kansas hosting Kansas. Um, not a whole lot to talk about other than I think it was a big bounce back game. Naturally, it's Kansas, but they did. This is this is the thing that made last week so hard watching Oklahoma struggle against Kansas because this is what a top 10 team does to Kansas. It's 55 to three literally held their entire team under 150 yards. That, that is what you do to Kansas. Um, and it's just been that way historically for a long time. So, you know, they, they get back to their ways, 200, almost, almost 300 yards on the ground, which was again, what we were talking about a, a little bit on the, the Iowa state game from last week that they just, they got away from it. I felt like, um, but, you know, again, to your point, coming down the stretch, they, they still have OU. Um, so that they have to gear up for that. Um, anything I missed there on that game? Uh, only thing I'll say is this. That's a great game to have lined up in your schedule coming off of a, of a heartbreaking loss, right? right? Um, get some confidence back in. Go out there. Toss it around with your boys. Get a big win. Now let's go try and make a push to, you know, Maybe a maybe a Sugar Bowl berth or just a, a fun a ten win season. Yeah. Which Mike Gundy's found a way to do that year after year after year. These guys are seven and one right now. Like they are a great football team that has the opportunity to win a couple more games and be, you know, in a in a, in a great bowl game and a great season for this for for the school the whole nine yards. So, um, yeah, t hats off to Oklahoma State for for that big win. But let's let's move on to what I think was. Um, the marquee matchup game of the weekend. That is down in Waco, Waco, the house that Bryce built, McLean Stadium. Texas goes on the road, again comes out, takes an early lead, carries that lead into the second half, deep into the second half, yeah. and finds a way to make enough mistakes to lose the game. Because you look at this. Let's let's start with the positives. I want you to give us the positives on your on your Baylor Bears. 
they found a way to win a very, very big game, right? Yeah. I mean, let's start there. Right, and then right, we can right. talk about maybe some of the things that Texas did bad. Yeah, I mean, look, you you have for 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 you know, Baylor, you've got Texas and and you know, this week TCU, both teams that want to beat you. Mm-hmm. Does not matter if you're 0 and 8, 0 and 10 uh heading the last week of the season. Those everybody wants to beat one another. So getting out of these games regardless of how it looks first quarter to fourth quarter, getting a win is huge. Yep. Texas is is what I think they are a good team. I think they just have to understand how to finish. That was something that we had to – we, you know, Coach Cos was our strength coach at Baylor. He drilled that into us from, you know, really my my freshman, sophomore year um, to where, you know, in 2012 after after Griff's year, I really feel like at that point it was kind of hands off the wheel. Like we, we knew what it took to finish games. I think Texas – just needs that. They need to understand how to win games because this offense, Sark, we've talked about. It. I think Sark can be there for a long time if he wants to be. I think he's I think he really is a good coach. I think he's going to recruit well. Um I think they're going to be um uh, you know, kind of a force to be reckoned with in the Big 12 for for a lot of years. But you can't be a force to be reckoned with if you can't finish. Right. And so that's where they have to they're just going to have to take this year and say, look, man, we, you know, the old, one of my famous quotes, or not my famous quotes, Coach Codge's famous quotes is, you don't lose, you learn. Mm-hmm. They are learning right now. They are up in games. They got to learn how to finish. All that being said, because I know we talked about Baylor, Baylor found a way to win 100%. They did not have a great game in the first half. Um, you know, this was the first time I thought that, that Gary Bohannon wasn't, wasn't seeing the field as well. Um, you know, two, two tough picks there. Um, but again, on the back of Abram Smith and this rushing a- a- attack, they know their identity. They've known their identity for a long time, almost 250 yards on the ground. And then they play defense together. It is such that I'm telling you that that defense, those 11 guys on defense are just fun to watch. If you're a college football fan, I know it's always fun watching offense scoring points. When you see a defense fly around and play together, it's just fun to watch. And I think what Dave Aranda has done is really positioned himself as as what I think should be the coach of the year this year, taking a what would have been, you know, and what everybody else was saying was the bottom tier Big Twelve team to the number now they're number eight or I mean uh, twelve in the country. What he's done there, they are they are learning who they are, they are loving who they are, and they're having fun playing ball. They are, yeah. They're they're creating a foundation for success moving forward. You look at these two teams, Burn Torns running out on the field in Waco, historically, right. This outcome doesn't happen, right. It's been a complete flip flop. Baylor has gone through it in the last you know since you left, right. You guys built it up. Robert Griffin III wins the Heisman. Bryce Petty comes in. You guys win two Big 12 championships, put Baylor on the map. Now they've gone through the scandals, the different coaches, ups and downs, and they have found a way to just lean on that foundation of, hey, we're Baylor. Right. We got this sweet new stadium. We got some sail gators outside on the water, (laughs) and we're going to strap it on and figure this thing out and learn how to finish. That's the big thing. I think a sign of a really good football team is when you're not playing your best, like Gary Bohannon, yep, you know, turning the ball over, still finding a way to scratch, claw, yeah. and get a victory. Especially a, a big, this is a huge victory if they're trying to go and accomplish the things that they want to accomplish, which is get to the Big Twelve title game right here in December. They've got to do what they just did. Yep. Find a way yep. to win, regardless. It doesn't have to be pretty. Just find a way to win. So. What do you think? Does does this put Baylor in a obviously a better position? They won the football game, but does this give you more confidence in them being one of those two teams in Jerry World in December? I mean, are you would you stamp it right now? The Baylor Bears are going to play for a Big Twelve title. Yeah. So so what we have coming down the stretch, I, and and I know I I hate I hate throwing color on on questions that should be direct questions yes or no yes I see them being in December I like I told you I think they are a team that can beat OU um if if this 
again, and we we we've mentioned the Jekyll and Hyde comparison to a player. I think that OU as a team collectively that they can come out and be all world like what we just saw last week, or what we saw in the second half against Texas. And then we can also see this OU team be who they were against Kansas, which is just like, hey guy, wake up. If they do that, if they're if they, if that that team walks out like they did against Kansas against Baylor, I think they get slapped up and down the field. Oh, and you think about the OU Baylor matchup. I think last time we were in McLean, or maybe it was the time before. It was a. I mean, Baylor was just having their way in the first half. Right. Jalen Hurts had to bring them all the way back. Uh, to try and win the game there, yeah, there and, right. and they did. They ended right, up right, winning, right, right. but it was like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? So th- that's that's a great point. That's gonna that is the circle it on your calendar, November thirteenth. Yeah, yeah. Oklahoma travels to Waco to uh, take on the Bears. That is, in my opinion, the Big Twelve Championship before the Big Twelve Championship. Yeah, right? I do think I do think to add on that though, and and what the the, the color was going to be was was can you do uh, what we did against you know Texas at TCU, that is a tough game. Um, then they have I think Kansas State and Texas Tech coming down the stretch. So you know they've got one out of out of four games that on paper is going to be the tough game. On paper, K State, Texas Tech, and TCU they should beat. And I think if that happens, then it's going to be really interesting what happens in this Bedlam game. Yep. It is. It is. Because what happens if Oklahoma State beats OU and we beat OU? Are you saying it's Oklahoma State? I, naturally, it would be an Oklahoma State-Baylor game. But what happens if we beat if we beat OU um, in two weeks? And, and then, then Oklahoma then, beats uh, exactly. Oklahoma State. Yeah, and then it's Oklahoma a, State beat us. So that's that's what we had in 2014 still, when it was like, you know, right. we didn't have a Big 12 championship game to come to. But that's – you never want to leave it in the hands of anybody judging outside. I don't, I, I don't know. You want to get there, right? You just want to get yeah. there. Take care of your business. It's still – I know at this point in the season, everybody, obviously, we we started doing it last week, is trying to look ahead yeah. to that matchup. Right. Internally, put your head down one week at a time because if you don't win one week at a time, you're not going to be there yeah. at the end anyways. Well, and I think this is a, that's a really interesting point too because I got to on – on our After Dark show, uh, presented by Bet Rivers, thank you, um, I got to speak to Gary Bohannon about that. You know, hey, are you guys looking ahead? You kind of control your own. De- and I was tossing him up, just waiting for him to be like, yeah, man, we got, you know, where everybody's looking at, you know, at OU. And he said, man, I don't even know who we're playing next. I didn't even know that we had OU coming up good, until you said mentality. that. And that's, and that's what you love about this team. And, and I, and I think that they really do embody that as it's, it's, it's just head down. If you line up against us on Saturday, we're playing you. If not, we're not worried about you. Um, so, anyways, it was a, it was an awesome awesome time to get to speak to him. So, that, um, okay, anything else you'd like to add? Nope, that's good. Last one of this past week, oh, Iowa two more, two more. That's yeah. correct. It's all good. Iowa State at West Virginia. Let's go there then. Yeah, I mean, shoot, this is the one I this is what I said, and 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 this is what's it. Uh, you know, I think Oklahoma State goes to West Virginia this week. That place, I'm telling you. Is it's, it's just like Stillwater. You asked me this last week, would you rather go play at Iowa State or at Oklahoma State? Ten times out of ten times, I'd rather go play Iowa State. If you asked me, would you rather go play at Morgantown or Stillwater? I'm I don't know. I don't know I either. <laughs> I, I hated <laughs> really? playing at both of those. Oh places. my gosh, I'm telling you. It it was only and, and I've lost in both places. It, it's a long it's trip. Sucks. It's the furthest trip you'll make of the year. Yeah. Um it's the the fans are nuts. There's something about that that stadium that you just can't get it going. It's like it sucks the energy out of you. Yep. You know. Yeah. And yeah, I I I don't want to be going on the road to yeah, West Virginia. That's for darn sure. Well, and that's so you know, Iowa State had to get through this game to stay in the conversation, and they played well. I mean, you know, shoot, this was again what we had talked about a top five nationally ranked defense that gave up 38 points. Yep. Tough environment, but you're kind of built off of off of you know defense, especially as we were saying that you know finally Brock Purdy was distributing the ball like the like you know we thought he should have been the whole year. They got Brees Hall involved um, to uh, to kind of again find this identity on the offensive side of the ball because defense was you know defense was taking care of of their side, and then you know defense kind of let him down. I feel like. To me, in watching this game, hell, offense didn't score any points in the fourth quarter, which is just tough. Um, but 
nonetheless, they are now out of the conversation. Out of the conversation. Yep. It's starting to narrow itself down, which is fun. It's really fun. But there's still, I mean, we really won't know, depending on what happens, right? But we could potentially not know who we're seeing in Jerry World until Bedlam. Bedlam. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It, and, and again, West Virginia hosts Oklahoma State. I mean, that's, that's, those dudes are getting drunk right now. Yes. That's that's how that place operates, and I love it. Um, so to have two top 25 matchups come to Morgantown in late October, early November, I mean, you couldn't write up a better schedule for the Mountaineers to start, um, you know, uh, disrupting some things in the Big 12 to where it could be another, you know, who knows, Oklahoma-Baylor matchup. I, You know, that's another thing, okay? So if, if Oklahoma State – Goes and and I don't know I don't know. There's so many there's so many there's situations. so many variables Golly. still. Right? Yeah, keep on. Okay, so we got um, big news down in Fort Worth. Yeah, Earth. this is uh, this was the. I don't want to say that I saw this coming. I I thought it would would be if it if it wasn't this year. I thought that next year his his seat would be on fire. Um, but man, mid year to a guy that's been there for 21 years for you, um, a lot of good football put you on the map. I didn't read all that into it, but you go and lose to Kansas State 31 to 12. You're th- what, three and five? It's TCU. You've had a couple rough years in the past several years, right? But you are, I mean, in the, you're, you're Coach P. You are what made this program what it is. You are, yeah. you know, th- there was talks of building a statue for this guy, right? I mean, there's just – there's so much history there. And so I'm with you. Can this guy in the middle of the season – I think, again, didn't read too much into it, that they tried to do a, a Coach O type of deal with, like they're doing down in, in Baton Rouge. Hey, we're going to part ways, but we want to be respectful. Why don't you finish out the season? And it, hats off to Gary Patterson for saying, no, you don't want me? Thank you. I'm going to yeah. pack up my I'm going to get my little box with the two handles on the side and the cardboard top right. and I'm going to go to my Fake office plant. and I'm going to try and fill it up with all the trophies that I won you guys and then I'm going to essentially just flick you off on the way out. Yeah. Right? I mean it's completely disrespectful I think, but at the end of the day what is he there to do? He's there to win He's football gotta games. Win games, man. Yep. Got to win games, got to be able to recruit and and again and and you know, I talked about it last week. It it's been an injury riddled defense. Um, haven't been great on offense. They just haven't looked like we were talking about with Caleb Williams just having fun. I just feel like this program hasn't had fun. It in looks like, like a couple years when they get out there. It's almost like this feeling of, oh, yeah, we have to do this again. Right, right, right. right. Like, do we have to play today? And that's not indicative of what Gary Patterson preaches, or at least yeah. you know has in the past. So. Something's wrong there, um, you know. But you know he's out, and we'll we'll see who fills his spot next year. That that's a very desirable job, if I, you ask me. Yeah, I I think so too. I mean, look, you're you're in the heart of heart of uh, of DFW, which is a a just a lovely place to live. Um, and it, you're the, in Fort Worth, you right? just you got a new stadium, big stadium. You know, renovation. So you obviously Great have donors and, right, and right, stuff. right, right. So I mean, um, it, it, let me ask you this: Would you rather? Two coaching vacancies in, in our <laughs> conference. Would you rather go to Fort Worth and live yeah. on West Seventh and you know coach the Frogs, or go out to Lubbock and be the head coach for Texas Tech? Yeah, I, I mean, mean we talked about this. I think you, I think you have to be a West Texas guy to want to to. Art you know, Hey, no, no brainer. I'd go West Texas. I'm going to Fort Worth. Hundred like percent. There's, there's no way that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, even Garrett's over here, the Texas Tech guy, saying, yeah, I'd, I'd stay in Fort Worth too, but. Um, look, West Texas is is a beautiful place for West Texas people. I love West Texas people. Um, I just couldn't do it, so that's probably a terrible question for you to ask me. But um, I I know that that both of those programs are going to get some studs, and we and I would assume it's going to be the Sunny Dykes and Mister UTSA um, Jeff Trailer. Yeah, Jeff Jeff Trailer, and and then hopefully a Joey McGuire conversation comes up. Um, hopefully in our brawls conversation comes up in tech and needs to happen. Um, but, but I think, you know, I actually like the trailer pick a little bit better for Fort Worth, right? A young guy, 
been in Texas for a while. I, I like that better than the, the tech move. I think Sonny Dykes, I think our Bryles, you know, kind of an um, an older um, kind of seasoned vet within within the, the the coaching system there probably fits better. If I were, you know, a bet man, that's where I think TC would probably lean towards. Yeah, that'd be know, interesting. Sonny, Sonny uh, could there, come back. There will be a lot of a lot of conversations. What I hope happens is that both Tech and TCU both take their time through this process. Don't go out there and just try and grab the first guy. Bring a couple guys in, interview them, figure out the culture fit. Oh, I feel like these people are getting paid so much money nowadays, and they're not even do, doing any due diligence to make sure they're the right fit, right? And it's just hoping. What what is the right fit? Do you think for college football today? I mean, if you're if you're so just again continuing on the the, the vacancies that we have right now in the Big Twelve. I mean, if you're if you're tech and if you're a TCU uh, a, alumni booster, whatever. I mean, is it the same fit that you're looking for? Is it? I mean, how do you how do you evaluate what a what a college football coach, you know, embodies for your for your program? Well, I think it's just like any other job, any other industry, right? It's like, do they fit culturally with the people that we have here, and also the program as a whole? Like, you're not going to go hire a Ed Orgeron to come to West Texas and be, you know, yeah. coach Texas Tech. It's just not a cultural fit. Um, you would hire an Art Browse. That's what we're talking about, like a West yeah. Texas yeah. guy, because they understand the the people, they understand the town. And then when you're sitting, like I'm saying, bring them in for an interview. Does that athletic director truly believe in that coach? Does that coach really want to buy into the way that they do their things, right? The culture of the program, the culture of the school, the student body. Do they want to be a figurehead, not just for that team and that program, but for the school in general? Like that, all of that creates energy. Yeah. Like Lincoln Riley is the head coach of Oklahoma, but he also is beloved by the university as a figure of that university yeah right i think that's what it takes when you're kind of figuring out who's going to be the leader of your football program let's just face it i mean these guys they make a whole lot more money than the president of the whole university of and they're in the limelight a whole yeah. lot more yeah they're not making the day-to-day -day educational um decisions but a big part of a culture of a school is their athletic program you win football games you get money correct that's how it go. Correct. So That's we'll see. It'll be, be it'll be interesting. Um, beautiful. Okay. Cool. Well, let's let's, uh, uh, let's dive into uh, the games for this week. Let's do it. So let's before do we it. do, let me Post tell Halloween. you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up, we're getting through the season now, but you can still sign up. Um, it is the time to do so. They are offering still a two hundred and fifty dollar match bonus for your first deposit. What sets them apart is they require just one play through to turn your bonus into cash money their new rush pay instant approval withdrawing your winnings is safer more secure and more reliable we are in the middle of the sea well kind of the back half of the season championship november now but get in on the action still in the next couple games uh, by going to betrivers.com or by downloading the bet rivers ios app must be 21 years or older a gambling problem call 1-800 gambler Bet River's been awesome. Uh, amazing partner really throughout the year. Been. Hopefully yeah. we can continue this relationship uh, because they have been uh, a, a really, really good partner. And it's a lot of fun, too. I mean, you, you're talking about the you know the lines for the games, the over-unders, all, all the fun stuff that's becoming more and more popular. I know. So well, go, and go it's, it's gone Rivers. by so so dang fast. But I think what, what's really cool, too, is we've been talking about, man, how to make this better. How do, how do, we, how do we get better? How do we make it more interactive? So – um, you know, first off, thanks for all the all the fans out there. But but this is this has been fun for us, and and super excited to to watch November with you guys. Talk about it, obviously, um, and then just just how do we make it better? How do we make it cooler? Um, and as always, um, and engaging and entertaining for you guys. But all right, so look, we've got uh, we've got four Big Twelve games coming up. Week ten of the season, week eleven for us because we did a sweet pregame show. That's right. Um, we've got the is this battle, battle of the apple? Am I making that up? Is it what, what's Kansas, Kansas State? That's got to be battle of something. I forget. Obviously, in state, big, you know? big in state, uh, in state matchup. Battle of something has to be. Um, 
doesn't really matter. I think K State runs away with this. Um, you have uh, sorry. Thanks, Garrett. Appreciate it. Uh, Kansas State is a twenty-three and a half point favorite over uh, KU. Over under set at fifty-six and a half. We were talking about this before the show. Crazy number that Vegas came up with there. What's the what's the insights for for this game? So I just looked it up. It is the Sunflower Showdown. Would have never in a million man. I'd have lost the Sunflower Showdown. I Jeopardy. yeah. I would have gotten out on who wants to be a millionaire, mm-hmm. Regis. Um, in the Sunflower Showdown, I am gonna take. Uh, I'm actually gonna take Kansas. Wow. Plus twenty three and a half. That's a lot of points. Yeah, but I. I know that we didn't talk about it. Um, just because I wanted to save them the embarrassment. But did you see what the quarterbacks went for against Oklahoma State? It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. But for those of you, who don't they've won know. one game this year, so you know they're that's true. Cap- they're capable. The QBs combined nine of 18, 44 yards, and three picks. Yeah, that's tough. Um, so I'm taking K State. Don't care that it's at home. Minus twenty three and a half. Over under fifty six yeah. and a half. What do you got there? Taking the under. Okay. Hoarding. Moving on. Not an appetizing game, in my opinion, to, to watch that This one, one. right here? Uh, no, the, the Kansas-Kansas State okay, game. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, uh, All right. Oklahoma State at West Virginia. Trap game like we talked about. Yeah. Can West Virginia do it again Can't this weekend? It. They've got Oklahoma State favored by three and a half points. Bryce, who are you taking no, you in this go, You go first. You go All right, first. You I'll go first. first. <laughs> Can I'm they do ta- it again? I'm taking the Mountaineers. Oh, I love it. I Mountaineers love it. plus three and a half. I think, man, they got a little confidence this past week. If they can replicate that and they beat Oklahoma State, the number 11 team in the country in the college football playoff, what a big win for that program. It will shake everything up. My heart's telling me it's not going to happen, but my my head is certainly telling me that I want it to happen. So I'm taking West Virginia, the Mountaineers in Morgantown. Love it. The plus moonshine three and a half over freaking Cowboys. Tickle or Pickle or whatever his name is. That was such a great show. Um, I I would love to see a stat on this, but when Letty Brown goes from 100 yards, the Mountaineers win. Like they, it has to be damn near 90 percent of the time. Um, Letty Brown got going again, and they beat. Iowa State, a really good defense. Defense normally travels. Oklahoma State has – they can't lose. They can't lose this game. So you got to think the Cap Mullet is talking them up. Um, it will be like we've drilled over the head a million times. It will be how does Spencer Sanders come out. Yeah, yeah. Will Spencer Sanders rise to the occasion or will it you – know, it's the Jekyll and Hyde like you've talked about all year long. I know. What Spencer Sanders do we get? That'll be the teller. I agree. So, um, golly, I want to do it too. I want to do it with you. I want to say the Mountaineers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it just for fun. I think it is. I think it is gonna be the Mountaineers to, to, to just put a ridiculous kink in this Big Twelve showdown. All right, we December. agree. We agree. Moving um, on. Baylor at TCU. Interesting line here. Uh, Baylor minus seven. At TCU, just fired the long-term coach, long-time coach, rather. 58-and-a-half is the over-under. What say you? I'm going Baylor much bigger than seven points. I I have not had any bit of confidence in TCU all year. Baylor is now in, in November. We've talked about Dave Aranda and what he is preaching in that locker room. I think they've got a good head on their shoulders. This will not be a trip-up game. I think Baylor wins by minimum of two touchdowns. I'm taking Baylor uh, minus seven for sure. Yeah, I like this pick too. Um, I got them at least two touchdowns, at least two touchdowns. They're going to take care of business um, knowing what's ahead. Like my man Gary said, they don't care. It's all about TCU going into Fort Worth, taking care of business, competitive maturity. I love it. Uh, we've said that a couple of times with, with Coach Aranda. Um after the, the post game at, at Oklahoma State, they have grown. We just talked about it at Texas. They they did that. Um, wasn't their best game. They still got it done. Um, Baylor big, and then I think it's going to be um, probably pretty dang close to that. I'm going to take the under though. I'm going to I'm going to push at 58 and a half. I like that. That's what I was kind of. I, I don't know if you can, it, but no, it's half a point. Okay. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go the over. 
Okay. No I think wish. Gary Bohannon is going to come out and just have a career day. Ooh, love it. Yep. Love it. Rock and roll. What we got next? All right, Texas at Iowa State. Uh, Iowa State minus six and a half. I'm taking the Cyclones of Iowa State in Ames. Tough place to play, I, I, which is crazy. I mean, Texas, I know. I'm know. i picking against them every week, and I'm getting it right. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, yeah. is this the week where they finally come out and can finish? They haven't showed it to me not a single time yet. Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma State, this past weekend at Baylor, they get up and they can't put their – Foot yeah. on their throat, yeah. whatever acronym right, 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 you want right, to use, right, right. right? And just choke them out and win. So I am i don't have confidence in them. I'm going Iowa State minus six and a half. I agree. I think I, I think that Iowa State still has something to play for. What's, what's crazy is that Texas is sitting at four and four. I mean, Yikes. they got a solid chance to miss a bowl. Um, and, and Iowa State needs this win to get into it. Uh, so I got Iowa State. Um, I'm going to say they're going to win by nine. It's like the first time we've pretty much agreed across the board. Yeah, well, I know. I know. That's uh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty close. Um, yeah. We're starting to like each other a little I bit. <laughs> I tell you what, you're not as uh, dumb as I look. Um, so, man, I tell you what, this has been a hell of a show. Um, thank you all for for watching, for listening, for participating. Um, and Trevor, thank you as always. Bryce, it's an absolute blast to get in here and and, and talk shop with you each week. Um, we're we're putting this one out a little bit later. Uh, this week bit because some work things on both of our sides, but um, man, we love love the interaction. Some of you guys on Twitter and whatnot have, have really been uh, communicating with us. We love that. Continue to do that. Again, we are um, e ecstatic whenever you guys interact, so we can talk about some of those things. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Me and Bryce on our personal accounts. We're retweeting this stuff all day long. You can watch this podcast on anywhere that you get your podcast. We're on YouTube. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on anywhere you can get it. So subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. The next couple weeks will be a lot of fun unpacking mm. the Big 12 and watching this thing unfold. Watch our Saturday night show. It's live. Me, Bryce Petty, Christian Hackenberg, George Whitfield. We follow up the key the, – the, kind of the, the key matchup game of the evening, uh, typically the primetime game, and then we just unpack everything, immediate reaction. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Join into that. But uh, we love hanging out with you guys. We love talking the Big 12. And uh, that's it for the Trevor and Bryce Show, that's episode 11. See you.